Hey everybody, it's Andy here, AK Montolio. We're back for another Vintage League and we're looking at Cradle Vine today. And this is a deck that is a contender for me at Eternal Weekend North America coming up in about three weeks from now. Uh, I have been playing with this deck for a number of weeks and I do like it. Uh, one of the difficulties that I have with this deck right now is the shifting of the metagame uh currently uh, Lura, Lura's Jeskai Breach is one of the big decks in the format and I have been struggling against that deck uh, trying to make it a little bit better against that and I'm going to come to that in a minute but why do I like this deck well first and foremost it's got the typical bizarre Benjamin root wall of hollow one combo which is fairly confluent with the high majority of the non-dredge bizarre decks right now and that's an extremely powerful combination uh, if it does work you can put a a very strong clock on your opponent with some good disruption and force of vigors and of course uh, one of the main reasons to run this deck is its ability to cast collector roof very consistently on turn two between the avamaya cradle of gross and the gaia's cradles and you know if your opponent doesn't have the nuts on turn one uh, quite often you can just close them out there um, and if they do burn their force of will on it it does set you up to blow them out with force of vigor um, so, so that is another thing about the deck I really like. And of course, one of the coolest pieces is something that Canister came up with uh, in Hex Drinker. And this is a really big sink for your Gaia's Cradles and your Cradle of Gross, your Yavamaya Cradle of Gross. And when you get this thing up to three, it means that it can't be touched by instance. And the only card in the metagame that can mess with it really is Oko or Prismatic Ending. And uh, sometimes you can just turbo this thing uh you know if you have a cradle and play with three or four creatures and you have a second cradle in hand you can just put this thing into mini progenitus uh very quickly and it does win games any type of fair mid-range deck cannot deal with the hex drinker you can sit back on your piddly wings and block and uh, just start attacking and i've won many many games some of the most peculiar spots uh, against decks you wouldn't think it could do it against either so it is a powerful card and it's one i like a lot uh, a lot more than i thought now moving on to the, the mana base, uh, when you look at it, it's an obtuse amount of lands for a bizarre deck. I've got 19 lands in the deck, and at first glance, you're thinking, oh, wow, that's way too many lands. Why do they have that? Well, there's a number of reasons that I do, and number one, uh, Bazaar of Baghdad can filter any type of uh, filler that we don't want, so we are quite often discarding lands at a higher rate than you would with any other bizarre deck, but... Much like I said I can hard cast Collector Roof, having three main deck besage you, uh, which is uh, something that was uh, done by No Props in their Hogak list, list, and it's actually really good because much like Collector Roof, we can also cast besage you very consistently on turn two, and one of the main kill conditions that you see from your opponents is a Sphinx of the Steel Wind coming into play. And we can deal with that very consistently. And uh, with this build, I have had almost no difficulty with Sphinx of the Steel Wind. I think probably in the last seven or eight tries, I've lost to it once. I just couldn't find it. Um, so that is one of the reasons. And the second reason is, is Golo Shops has started to creep back into the metagame again. And it's a very common play pattern, uh, particularly when on Magic Online, somebody knows what you're playing. To see a main deck um, turn one spyglass come down or pithing needle where they shut off your bazaar and a deck like hollow vine you are dead unless you can counter that or force a vigor it and this deck you are not dead because we can just put a yavamaya cradle of growth or a besage you down on turn one cast our creature and then start you know casting creatures with gaia's cradle my point being is you can cast your creatures consistently with this deck and despite you want your bazaar uh the reality is is that you don't need it and that is a really strong point about this particular deck the next thing I wanted to comment on is Bazaar of Baghdad. What happens when opponents see Bazaar of Baghdad is they automatically go into, I need to side in all my graveyard hate. People are siding in things like Leyline of the Void and Graft Digger's Cage. And the reality is, guys, as you look at my deck list, there is nothing that that affects except for my Benjamins in my deck. It doesn't do anything. And uh, it's it's kind of like they're putting Pyroblast in their deck against a non-blue deck. It just doesn't impact my deck in any significant way. And 
Uh, so that is a huge plus. People panic and they side it all in, and really it doesn't do anything against our deck significantly. I mean, there are times, obviously, that, you know, you open up with a double Vengevine hand, you get excited and they have Leyline. It does happen, but it's not it's not a common theme with the deck. The other neat thing about this deck is, as you look at it and you go, oh, wow, there's no discard equity outside of the root walls and the Vengevines in the deck, which is true. You look at something like Hogak Vine, you've got four Hogaks and you've got four, you know, three, four blood gas that extra that you can discard which makes discarding a lot more palatable than this deck. But the reality is, is that yes, you are discarding Collector Roos and Hex Drinkers and you know Force of Vigors or Wastelands that you don't want to discard typically. But the inverse side of that is, is that going back to the panic state, is people will instantly Wasteland your Bazaar because they think you, that you need to have the Bazaar to play. But quite often, my experience with this deck is you only need to use your Bazaar once to set things up on average. And then you're moving on to casting those high equity cards in your hand that you don't want to discard. So it's a really neat, to, it's almost like a time walk in a way when your opponent is doing that to you. Now, not to intone you don't have bad hands and this deck can you know not need further sculpting beyond one Bazaar activation. But it, it is consistently good that way. And I find myself feeling uh, happy when the bazaar goes away because I've got an extra turn where I'm just untapping, playing a Gaia's Cradle, and I'm casting a Collector Roof for a, and a Hex Drinker in the same turn. So it, it's got some neat play in it. Now let's move over to the sideboard here. I don't think that there's anything overly innovative here. Um, well, I shouldn't say that because I have made some innovative changes to the deck, but nothing that should be overly surprising with the exception of the Graft Digger's Cage. And we're going to come to that a sec in a second. Now, you look at Canister's list. Uh, most people are running Canister's list. Uh, he has like four Deathrite Shamans in the sideboard. The problem with Deathrite Shaman is I don't feel it's impactful enough in this deck for what we need it to do. Now, against Graveyard Hate, Yes, it's okay because you have green mana and you can remove creatures from a graveyard. So Squeevine or Dredge would be an example of where I would love to have some Deathrite Shamans. But that in itself, to me, does not warrant a place of Deathrite Shaman. This deck does not have black mana in it outside of a Black Lotus or a Deathrite Shaman being able to produce it for another one. That is not consistent enough to be able to remove what is currently in the metagame in a big player in Breach, in my opinion. Now, when I used to play Bug... It was actually really decent against Breach because I could sit sit back on the Deathrite Shaman and chew away at their graveyard. This does not do that, okay? Next, when you look at Deathrite Shaman against Dredge, is it good enough against current iterations of Dredge? My experience is, is it, it is not. Now, if you can get control of the board and remove their graveyard once, yes, you can sit back on a Deathrite Shaman. So that comes to why I'm running cards like Endurance and Ravenous Trap. Ravenous Trap is, is still an extremely good card against Dredge. And it's only good against Dredge, because against the Root Wallet decks, it's an ineffectual card and has fallen highly out of favor against it. But I have found that I'm not favored against Dredge when I had Deathrite Shaman in this deck. And as a result, I've moved it and, and put in a couple different Ravenous Trap to be able to, to combat that. Leyline of the Void is the best card typically against Dredge. Uh, the problem with it is that we do not have the ability to protect the Leyline of the Void, and therefore... Uh, I don't want it to die to force a vigor just at the whim of my opponent having it. That's why we're on things like surgical extractions and, of course, endurance. We can hard cast endurance in this deck fairly consistently. So um, that is my graveyard package. Now, you see the Graft Digger's cages in my deck and going, oh my god, what is this guy doing? He's playing a bizarre deck. Well, as I said, I don't really put anything in my graveyard outside of the Benjamines. And Graft Digger's Cage is not for the dredge matchup specifically. Now, of course, it, it's got some blanket effect there, but I'm really running this because of the Breach decks that we're seeing in the format right now. Uh, the Jeskai Luris deck is reliant on Dreadhorde and Luris and Breach to be able to win their game. They can't beat a Graf Digger's Cage. They really can't, unless they remove it with a Prismatic Ending or an Abrade, and those are few and far between in their deck. They have to dig hard, and it's uh, not an easy card for them to get rid of. They are not expecting Graft Digger's Cage to come in against those decks. The other day I mulled to four uh, in the Vintage Challenge and just stone cold, like had nothing going on. I, I hard cast a Graft Digger's Cage on turn one, great turn two I, I cast a Hex Drinker and that was all I did all game. But I was able to get there, eventually building it up to a four four and putting it in a range. My opponent couldn't beat the cage. Um, so one, your opponent doesn't expect it. Number two, it also hits uh, 
shuts off Citadel in addition to that. So it's a little bit of tech that I'm playing with. I think it's really unexpected when you're casting that in a graveyard deck, or at least people think it's a graveyard deck. And the rest of the stuff is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, I've got a couple of mind break traps. I'm not crazy about the card, but I do think that we need at certain times to have that against some of the fast decks in the format like Doomsday and Peel. Anyways, guys, that is a really long-winded breakdown of what this deck can do. Uh, you're probably seeing this post-champs as I am not uh, posting my videos with defects when I Asians of my decks at this point in time. But uh, please hit that like and subscribe button. Feel free to leave any comments. We're going to see you for round one. All right, guys. Here we are for round one. And we're playing Cradlevine today. We won the die roll. Hmm. don't really think this hand is very good. I can hard cast this turn one, play a Lotus, play a Cradle, hard cast Vengevine, sit back on Basaju and Wasteland. Like, is that good enough? It's interesting. I feel like we can do more powerful things with this deck. Now, if we find a bazaar, this is really nice. I'm going to roll the dice, guys. I don't ever recommend doing this. So we missed. This is something I'm struggling with right now with, with this deck is because it's so awkward sometimes when you don't find your bazaar in the first couple, it's like you keep these unorthodox hands. Now, this is oops all spells. Well, we're going to die a quick death here. Had I had a collector roof in the opener, it wouldn't even have been a contest. I would 100% kept it. Circles recall, interesting, okay. Oh no, this, what is this? Expedition map, that's a, a not a common card. Go and get an academy, of course. This is like Belcher, old school Belcher. Can they actually get it out here? One, two, three, there's short one. Okay, thank God I have, uh, well, now they can do it easy and kill me, excuse me. The Candelabra just lets them untap and play the Belcher and combo me, but if I can get rid of this Academy, it's a pretty big game. But uh, that seems like it's probably moot. Jeez, what if uh, a Collector Roof have been really nice here. Okay, well, let's take a peek at their deck here. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, well, we got a lot better knowing what we're up against here. This is going to be a match where we want our uh, our mind break traps. I think we could go for a Besaju here. I don't see Hex Drinker being a play player at all in this matchup. So let's take a look at their list here. We don't really have anything that does anything here impactful. So I think I'm just going to play my land here and hope that we have some good tools. 
good enough tools here to be able to cast our spells consistently. What we're looking for is a very fast collector. This is reasonable. I'm going to keep this one. Uh, I'm not crazy about it. But it does have disruption in it. And if we're lucky, we're going to be able to... Uh, well, that's unfortunate. I just don't think the, the beatdown plan is the number one priority. Right now it's survival. <clears throat> We've got some really good disruption in our hand here. And this can get the academy. Our force of vigor is going to be effective. One top, one bottom. Uh, I am going to hit their candelabra here. I'm really wanting to cripple them as badly as I can. Like, I'm definitely going to force a vigor here. Okay, okay. I think I'm going to do it now. And the reason is, is I don't want them to play an academy and get full value. This cripples them pretty good. And if they do force this somehow, I've got the trap. Like, do I just trap this thing? I think I do. I think I'm just going to do it. I realize how greedy this is, but it keeps them away from Mox Opal here. And I, I'm really wanting to just start churning here. So I think that this is, I've kind of played my hand. I crippled them as best I can. Let's just hope we hit a root wall. We didn't. It was close. We're out of gas now. We just need to turbo as best we can here. Or find a collector roof. We discarded one there, but couldn't cast it quite yet. But cradle helps here. Um, I do think I'm going to churn. A little bit awkward. Maybe we find a hollow one. Uh oh, we're just not presenting enough of a clock here to, to feel safe, but I'm on top one bottom again. How about my cradle's pretty good. To be honest, I don't mind that besage you. But I think the cradle is just more important right now. Because it allows me to cast a collector roof potentially. Well, let's cross our fingers, guys. We're setting this up as best we can, but... Uh-oh. They're just going to play a Belcher out and kill me next turn, or do they have the LED? Ooh, that's more than enough to kill me here. Tezzeret, jeez. Yeah, that gets a Belcher, and it just kills me. 
No, they, they don't have anything under the chrome box. Okay, next turn it does though. Wow, nice. Okay. Now just go and get a belcher. So we have to, we're literally having to top deck a collector roof here. Good for them. I don't think we churn here. They got it. Tough loss, guys. Let's see what we, if we would have found one here had I done this. No. Nope. All right. Well, please hit the like and subscribe button, and we're going to see you for round two. All right, guys. Here we are for round two of our Vintage League. We're playing Cradle Vine. So my opponent is typically a combo player. This hand is really bad in the sense that um, it doesn't have a whole lot going on for it. Uh, but we do have a turn one collector roof. But I, I just think we can do better. Yeah, this is a lot better. We're going to keep this one. I was very tempted to keep that because of the potency of turn one collector roof on the play. But if it gets forced, it's really just bad for me. This has got a lot of the tools that we're looking for here against combo. Well, I'm kind of wanting to keep the Pesaju to be honest, but I think I'm going to because one of the ways that I lose is uh, to a Sphinx of the Steel one coming down. I, I don't really know what my opponent's on. But assuredly, uh, given their history, I think they're uh, likely on combo of some sort. And this gives us like a, a, a cradle. Okay, pretty good start. They got the Lotus there. Basic planes, how interesting. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, this is not what I thought it was, that's for sure. But I'm glad I got rid of the wasteland. It doesn't seem to be overly impactful here. Okay, so we did set that up really nice with the Pesaju there, guys. That that was exactly what we were trying to do. Let's see if we can find a Vengevine here. Ooh, that seems like a really good card against mid-range, doesn't it? I mean, they've shown they've got the swords here, but I don't think that's my primary plan here. Move to combat. We'll get our hollow one in here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the Besaju here. And I'm going to cast my Hex Drinker. Because I can't put it out of range. And next turn I can put it out of range. In addition to that, uh, I believe I can pump up my Root Walla. Okay, they did find a Mox. Okay. That's fantastic. Let's just get it into play. 
All right. Nice win for us there. Okay, so we're playing against Mono White. Mono White Hate Bears. I think we definitely want the Forest here. I could very well see them having some Path to Exiles in their deck and Ghost Quarters. Don't think we need an extra Besiege you here. I don't think Force of Vigor is likely to be amazing in this match. I also don't really like Chalice on the draw. I could see bringing in uh, an Endurance to be able to trap them. Probably an extra Collector. For that. Maybe, maybe I just don't need all the Vigors. Let's try something like this. Endurance, like the graveyard strategy itself is not why I'm playing the Endurance, is to being able to trap their little guys. All right. Um, this is a keep. This is what I'm talking about, guys. Look at this. My opponent just mulled to, to five for us. Like, that's really fantastic. Okay. <laughs> that's really nice. Okay. I don't know, guys. That graveyard hate is not looking very good, is it? Nice to draw the mox there. It gives us a little bit of insulation. Now, if they have a tabernacle here, it's uh, not great for us, but uh, not devastating because we have a mox. But if you watched my deck intro, this is what I'm talking about. It's your opponent is essentially mulliganing themselves when they're when they're keeping these cards in their hand. Like I, all it does is get a Vengevine. We have no delve, nothing. Yep, and they're time walking themselves. No, they're not. They have restraint here. They know. Okay. Well, that's pretty good. They they did get us with the uh, the Kataki there a little bit. That's all right. Sweet. The question is, do they have Tabernacle? I'll trade my Hex Drinker with them. I'm going to keep my lands here. Now, they still can get me here. With tab if they have it. But a creature deck typically does not run it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, they must have Tabernacle here. 
That 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 makes no sense to me at all if they didn't have a tab. Oh, they, okay, that makes sense. They they want to get rid of my hollow one. That makes sense. Okay. I can't stop that. Yeah. I think I'm going to do it now. Still I still think it's worth it. We got some trouble getting through this here, unfortunately. I'm hoping to find a Gaia's Cradle here and another Root Walla. That's pretty damn good. Can't get through, and that's all right. How's that Gaia's Cradle look in this board, guys? Really strong, eh? And see what they do. I'm gonna put this out of range. I think it's I think it's worth it to do it this way. Because it, it's it, it is my active win condition right now, and I am looking for a Gaius Cradle next turn, like Turbo. This is a byproduct of the potency of a card like Hex Drinker here. It's just there is an inevitability. Like my board is not impressive at all. It's just a bunch of piddly winks that are not really relevant, but that is relevant. Oh, okay, there we go. My opponent saw the writing on the wall. Uh, please hit that like and subscribe button, guys. Feel free to leave any comments. Always interested in different lines uh, that I may have missed or are more optimal. We'll see you next round. Hey, everybody. Sandy here, a.k.a. Montolio. We are back. And we did not win the die roll, unfortunately. This is our Belcher opponent that we played uh in round one and we lost to uh this time we are a little bit better off like if we had have been if we had been on the play here this would have been devastating i think we just would have won but our force of vigor here could be pretty good let's just see how far down the rabbit hole they go they got to turn one on us nope all right I am going to put them to the test. And our chalice is likely to just ice the game here, but let's see. Okay, it wasn't going to be a great bazaar, but we were going to discard serum powder. Serum powder, I guess, hex drinker, mox, hex drinker, chalice, and then... Hollow one. So a hex drinker is just not what we want to be doing. Do something like this. We have the tools to beat this deck. Like, Collector Roof is very powerful against them. 
but they're just an overt Belcher deck. This is what we, we saw last in round one. So presuming they're still playing the same deck, which, of course, I, I do believe they are, and I think we should be all right. Well, saying we're all right is not what I mean. Uh, we have the tools to fight this. This is obviously an explosive, dangerous deck. But they're notoriously glass cannon. Like you saw last game there, my opponent didn't have anything going on. They, they lost both their, their artifacts, and it was just over. I mean, it helps a lot when you know what you're playing against. We didn't know in game one. We just got absolutely steamrolled. And game two, we had a very close game, but uh, my opponent was able to replenish after a Force of Vigor, Mind Break Trap, and a Mental Misstep to disrupt them, which is a tribute to their deck. All right, what are we dealing with here? Well, it's pretty good if we find a Collector Roof. I'm going to try this. I realize I don't have any disruption here on the being on the draw. And I'm also ga gambling on finding something off the once upon a time here. But if my opponent doesn't go off, we I, I feel we have a fairly consistent chance of one finding the oof or, or a bazaar off that once upon a time. One top, one bottom. Let's see what we can find. So we found neither. We're going to take the Besaju here. And I'm going to cast a Once Upon a Time on their turn. We'll just sit on the Besaju. My opponent has to have alarm bells going off. Like, what do they have in their hand? It's got to be a Force of Vigor and Mind Break Trap and Mental Misstep, right? Now, we're vulnerable here. They still can kill us fairly easily, given what we actually do have in our hand, but... Okay, interesting. Preordain again. <clears throat> Two top. All right. I, I mean, I suspect that they're just going to... Okay, so they're sitting back. Wow. They don't want to expose. They're just so much thinking that I have something. Okay, there's a bizarre. That does shape our hand up. And hopefully find us an oof. Mm, let's let's do it. I mean, let's get it going. One, two. We'll get in for four. Some solid pressure going here. Unfortunately, we have to come off besage you, but uh, it just, the collector roof is so good, right? My opponent's been sitting back on their mocks in here. Yeah, like just game ending. This deck being able to cast collector roof is really good. I could have cast it turn one that game. All right, guys, see you next round. All right, guys. Andy here, AK Montoli. We're back for round four of our Vintage League. We were able to vindicate ourselves there last round against the Belcher deck that we lost to in round one. Being able to premeditate what you're playing against, or premeditate your opener against a known entity, it makes things a lot easier. And certainly Bizarre was plan B that game, wasn't it? All right. So this looks like we're playing against Luris. And we have a good hand here. This is the most popular deck right now on uh, in Vintage on Magic Online. Oh, I, excuse me. 
Very wrong. Wow, this is sweet. Lurus Grindstone. Well, we do have the next turn Cradle to set this up. So we're just going to get our engine going. And hopefully we're not dead. And this will allow us to hold up double Besage you next turn, potentially. Get in for four. Like, Gaia's Cradle into double Besage you is just so strong. Yep, we don't need to we don't need to react. We've got them on a two turn clock here. I could do uh oh I guess uh no I couldn't have killed them there. Yep. Breach grindstone, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Alright, so it's nice that they actually showed us that because we've got some endurances here to be able to combat this. <coughs> I don't think Hex Drinker is likely where we need to be. I think the Vigors are probably fine. Because they have a Breach Kill, I do think that Chalice is fine as well. I think I'll cut a Root Wall here. I don't think I want my Break Trap. We'll see how fast they are. Like, that was not a, an example of a, a fast kill. And I don't know that I want Cage. I haven't seen enough of their deck to know that I really need to shut Breach off. But if it is an overt Breach deck, like, it, it's a pretty reasonable plan of attack. Um, this, what does this hand do? We've got Breach covered. We've got a Force of Vigor to manage some of their stuff. And we've got Wastelands. I don't know. I'll try it. <clears throat> the painter. Yeah, like this does nothing against my deck. Literally nothing. I don't think I want to vigor those. Besage you, I do like that. Just take them off their land there. Opponents realizing they're not Nihil Spell Bombs, not looking very solid here. Consider that is a deal. I consider that a deal. Wow. Opponent just has nothing. Well, here goes my little engine that could. I mean, I'm getting my beat on, down on, guys. We've got interaction in, in Force of Vigor or Endurance if we need it. Okay. Yep. So they have to they have to put this on my wasteland. And I am just going to prompt the Force Will out of their hand. I, I, I'm going to uh, go after those two cards. I see no reason not to. They're, I think they're really struggling on land here. Yeah. 
you got my wasteland. Now, in fairness, guys, I'm not feeling overly secure here. Well, now I'm feeling a lot better about things. Just going to get this out of the way. I realize I'm giving up a little bit and losing this mox, but I think that's all right. We're just going to cast this collector roof, and uh, given what I've seen from their deck, I, I suspect they're just going to have a lot of trouble being able to beat it. The oof. That's not ideal. Would it be nice to draw land there to be able to pump my root wall up? I want to close this out as fast as possible. Okay. No, we're chipping away here. Surprised I haven't found a land yet. I've got 19 in my deck. No, in fairness, my opponent is struggling too. We've had two lands each this game. Notably, though, guys, without a bazaar. Yes, you can have that. Now, we're going to get them next turn. Unfortunately, I couldn't kill them right here, but. All right, there you have it, guys. Three and one. Let's see if we can close this out with a solid four and one. Okay, guys, here we are for round five. We are playing Cradle Vine. I'm currently sitting three and one. Our league has felt pretty good so far. And, yeah, this looks like a nice hand. Always a little bit of an awkward tension when you have a once upon a time in your hand and... Uh, a Force of Vigor as your only other green card. We're going to keep this one. This deck does have awkward openers sometimes. I mean, all the bizarre decks do, but... Okay, it looks like we have a bizarre mirror. What flavor are we up against? Okay. It's going to be a fast vine here. I'm glad to actually have this opportunity to play against uh, a mirror, excuse me. Something I need a little bit more practice with. Hopefully they don't have a hollow one here. Be it'd be tough. Now, if we find a wasteland, which we did, it's going to be interesting. I think we want a hollow one here. If they play a cradle, they're going to hit me for seven, eight. I still think it's worth it. Because we're going to be able to replenish ourselves next turn. And we still, we don't actually have vigor up, but... Let's hope they don't have another bazaar or a cradle for that matter. A wasteland is fine. So we take six. Okay. So we're going to need to hit here, and we didn't. It's a little disappointing. I think we can probably get rid of Force of Vigor here. Good, then they didn't do much. What, what's problematic for me here is that they have Forza Vigor, they get my mocks as well. 
But I do think it's worth playing the blocks out, and just hopefully they don't have vigor. And next turn we can try and replenish again. They didn't. This does allow me to trade with Revenge of Mine. Wow! I did not expect that to go that way, but that we were going to do just fine there. Even well with the loss of the Bazaar. Bring in these. Because they're going to have their own Besejus, I could see them being relevant. I'm going to get rid of the Collectors here is really the worst, and the Vigors are also quite terrible. We don't really want Ravnus Traps, and we don't really want Graf Diggers Cages. I, I, it depends on the flavor that they're playing. If they're actually playing Hogak, like four Hogaks, four Blood Gas, I think I would be open to playing a Cage, but Cage does not really stop Hogak unless it's in the yard. I just don't think it's really where I want to be. I think this is good. I'm still not sure what flavor my opponent's on because we just didn't see enough of their deck. But our gambit played off on the paid off on the wasteland there. Okay, looks like a nice opener here. I'm going to keep this one. Let's see if they bring in Leyline. It's a fairly big tell if they're on Leyline as to what they're running. Because the Jund version of Hogak Vine, yep, the Jund Hogak Vine plays Leyline, whereas the Cradle Vine version does not. Typically, yep, it's 100% Jund. And just a stitcher here. So Hogak is the scariest card here. Like this is such a nombo, right? First of all, my deck does not Leyline is just like such a good card. I'm so happy they play it because it's a it's basically a mulligan for them. And then they've got this Deathrite Shaman. Like I don't know, man. Now, it could change, but I, I don't think this is likely a, a very good start from my Hogak Vine opponent. Now, if they get Hogak itself into play, it, it could be very different for me. Hogak is, is definitely a card that I am actively worried about. And we can actually just cast Vengevine. Like, this is a type of hand where we can just literally cast it. I'm going to play the Green Root Wallas here because, one, I'm not too worried about Force of Vigor at this stage, like, in my hand of, of cast, uh, having something to pitch. Yes, I could hit their Leyline and their Mox, which is not the worst, but I'm more worried about being able to pump my stuff up with the Cradle. So what a likely line is from my opponent here is they're all excited. They've got a wasteland in hand. They're going to get my bazaar and they're going to surgical my bazaar. Well, they can't actually do that because they have a ley line of the void in play. But uh, that is a fairly common play pattern. And I I'm sitting here going, go ahead. My I've used my bazaar. I don't need it anymore. Now, would I like it? Yes. Do I need it? No. And look how effectual that ley line was there, guys. Not very. Look how effectual their death right was if the ley line wasn't there. Not very. I didn't even discard a card. So let's hope they get a Hogak here. They didn't. I could steal their wasteland, but I... I mean, one, two, three, four... They besaged me. Look at this, guys. Woo! All right. 
You got me. I'm not thrilled to lose the bazaar there, but it is what it is. I mean, my opponent's sitting here on uh, a whole lot of nothing. I'm just getting in with everything. They can kill my root wallow with their stitcher if they'd like. See, if they hit a whole guy here, this is very good for me. They did not hit a whole gack. All right. Good chunk of damage got dealt there. Let's see what happens. They did find a bazaar. Okay. Hogak. I have to discard everything. I'm feeling like we're in very good control here. I don't know. What do you guys think about this line here? It seems pretty good to me. All right, there you have it, guys. A nice 4-1 with this deck. I think we only dropped the first, like we didn't lose a game other than the first round. Yeah, we we, we, we lost 0-2 in round one to, to Belcher, and we did not drop a game in the remaining four matches that we played, and one of those was a repeat against the Belcher deck. Uh, it wasn't even close uh, once we knew what we were playing against. But yeah, I guess in closure on this, guys, when you're looking at a, this deck list, how many times did we see ridiculous graveyard hate against us? Like my opponent had Leyline of the Void there and a Deathrite Shaman on turn one, and it didn't mean anything. It did nothing against us. Uh, we saw Relic of Progenitor, or uh, what's it called? One of the Relics come in, didn't do anything against us. Like just people are playing all this sideboard hate against us, and it's doing nothing. And you see... The example of the bazaar, if you watch this league, there was a number of times where the sequence, the, the most common play pattern is you, you play your bazaar, you have your turn, your opponent on taps, they wasteland you, which is almost like a time walk because we're casting our spells from there and we're off to the races. This deck is very consistent at casting its spells on turn two once it's bazaar uh, because of the uh, seven cradles in the deck and uh, three besages. We, you're just off to the races. So... Anyways, guys, I won't deliberate too much now. You you had a very lengthy introduction to the deck, and I think uh, this play patterns of this league uh, evidence much of what I am uh, theory crafting here. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please hit the like and subscribe button. Feel free to leave any comments, and we're gonna see.